All right, this is our monthly meeting of the Michigan City Veterans Committee. We have uh, don't have a quorum. We thought one of our members would be able to uh, participate by phone, but that unfortunately is not the case. So Keith Devereaux and I are here, and uh, we have been discussing uh, before we started the meeting, which obviously we can because we don't have a quorum, um, about future direction. I think for a variety of reasons, we've kind of lost focus a little bit, and I think it's because a variety. Again, uh, we're starting this from scratch, so we haven't done this before. So we're trying to figure out for ourselves what seems to make the most sense. And so I think the, the, the prudent approach is that I poll each of the members individually, starting with one whether we should meet quarterly, which the ordinance calls for, whether we should meet monthly, whether we should meet every other month, and we can change that at any point. Right. But it doesn't it doesn't make sense to continue to try to meet every month if we're really not accomplishing anything. So the first thing is we need to, to uh, discuss how often we should meet and then when we should meet. Maybe there's a time that's a little bit more convenient for everyone. And now that we've been in this seven months, uh, maybe some of our members will have a better feel for what is a better time for them. And so, you know, maybe maybe it can't be in the afternoon. Maybe because of people's schedules, we need to do it at 5.30 or 6 o'clock or something. But we need to figure out what it is because the, the goal and the purpose is too important to lose track of that. So I think we need to do that. Right. Um, and then once we do that, I think I should also, since I'm doing this anyway, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, poll the board is if they have some thoughts about what direction maybe we should be considering or we should be taking. Uh, I talked to Lois Osinski, the county recorder, out at the fair this week, and for example, she is developing a program which is also already partially in place to allow veterans to record their DD 214s and make a permanent record of them so that if they ever need it, they don't have to go searching for it. It is a matter of public record and it is available to them. It's a great It's idea. been reg registered. She is in the process of putting that together right now. And uh, she told me that as soon as she gets it together, uh, there's some additional equipment or something that she needs to finalize it. But it's going to, she actually is doing some of that right now, but it's going to be in process. And I also saw an, an article, which unfortunately I haven't had a chance to read that closely this week in the news dispatch. And Maceo can help us with this. He was not able to be here today about the veterans program at Purdue Northwest and apparently is uh, very active out there and they had saluted a veteran as part of that veterans program so I need to read that uh, and I know Maceo was very um, committed to just like the rest of us are uh, to try to see what we could do to help veterans uh, at PNW but also in Michigan City in general so I think we had the basis we certainly know that that you Keith that myself that Steve Moore uh, that Natalie uh, that uh, Candace were all looking to do what we can, anything we can, to assist veterans. And I think we need to figure out what that focus is for the for the short term and the long term. Uh, we're not, you know, we're not going to set the world on fire. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to uh, recreate the, the, the wheel. anything, but, but, but we need to figure out what is it that practically we can do like this veterans program. And, and maybe our focus is going to be for a while simply uh, working on getting the words to word the veterans about programs like this, whether it's that or whether it's some of the other programs we talked about in the past few months, and maybe our role to get started is going to be uh, gathering information. gathering information and getting getting it to the veterans. Right. Uh, I talked to George Watkins this week. Uh, there was talk about hiring another veteran service officer for Michigan City, but they still don't have a viable candidate. So they're still interviewing, and George is still there. Joe Golick's still there. I understand that uh, Joe recently met with a veteran for four hours because his situation was that intense. And We've got dedicated veteran service officers. That we, we had them come in and they told us about they wanted a more uh, realistic count of, of Michigan City veterans and there's probably some work we can do along those areas. And I guess because of, uh, again, the flexibility of people's schedules, we kind of lost track of that. But at least we may be able to 
to assemble some basic information about that from all of us when we can get together in the same room. And so again, I think it starts with figuring out what makes the most sense schedule-wise. And maybe it's too ambitious right now to meet every month. We, maybe we don't have enough to do, or maybe it's just too busy for everybody. But let's figure out when we should meet and what our focus should be, and then uh, figure out a way to, so that we can at least start the process. If it's nothing more, as you said, than getting the information out to veterans and become a clearinghouse and uh, working with Joe and working with, with George and figuring out if there's some things from that standpoint that we may be able to do to assist them or simply getting the word out that those veteran service officers are available. I mean, I, I'm for the very first time, I've never thought of applying for veterans benefits, but I just got hit with a medical bill. I, I didn't apply when I went on Social Security, I didn't apply for prescriptions because I was only one, on one drug. Now my drug's costing me $450 a month. Um, situation changed pretty quickly. I made my last car payment on my newer vehicle on Monday and on Tuesday I found out it was going to be $415 a month for the Zeralto that I'm on, the yeah. blood thinner. Yeah. So I traded my car payment for medicine payment. But, and so and you're fortunate that's only one. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, there, there are, are some out there on, that are on four or five of them. Exactly, six of them. exactly. Yeah. So maybe, maybe it's uh, and as I said, uh, Joe apparently spent four hours with the veteran because his his uh, situation was complex, and maybe our part of our mission needs to be whether it's going out and speaking to veterans organizations or circulating po whatever whatever seems to make sense to get the words out to the veterans organizations. They may know, even know that there's. Uh, veteran service officers in LaPorte County available, but not know where they are, how to get in touch with them, or maybe feel that, well, you know, maybe I don't need them. Maybe I can do it myself, or, uh, you know, is it just going to be a waste of time? So maybe our function can be to work with the veterans organizations in Michigan City and help to get the word out to the veterans that there is assistance available. So I think we need to explore well, those things, but we need that we, we want we want to start becoming productive. I mean you're right, we've been we've been in operation for seven months and we haven't accomplished a whole lot. So we need to we need to refocus. Well, being in the military I think they learned, you know, it's a it's a network, it's a team thing. Yeah. And just because they got their D two fourteen and they're no longer in the military doesn't mean they're alone. Exactly. So, you know, they should know that they can come to, you know, us or their service officers or other veterans that can, you know, point them in the right direction. As I said, I make and it, it four hundred dollars a month, and you're right. There's no, I, you know, two month, three months ago, I wouldn't have imagined I needed prescription benefits. Yeah. There's no guarantee that that's the only one I'm going to be on. So, I can't apply for Social Security prescription drug benefits until November when the annual period opens. So I'm going to be paying $400 a month unless I can find a way to resolve that. So right. maybe I need to go see Joe or George and say, is there assistance with right. veterans available to me at least until I get there? So yeah, there's and so those situations with veterans could be changing also. Right. You don't need that. You, you figure you don't need it. I'm not going to go to school anymore. I'm, you know, I'm not going to do. I don't need. I hope I don't need death benefits right now. So I'm just not going to worry about it. But all of a sudden, you find yourself in that position, and sometimes it would have been better had you yeah. gathered some information ahead of time rather than wait until you're in your crisis mode. So right, right, and that's what the officers are there for. Yeah. You know, so. And they and they do that. And I, you know, I had a conversation with one of the county commissioners the other day out there, and I don't think that I, I differ strongly with certain members in county government who look at it as a numbers game. Well, how many veterans saw the veteran service officer? To me, the veterans who served, if we find one veteran who deserves benefits and we found a way to get those benefits for him or her, that veteran service officer is paid for themselves. Exactly. And, exactly. and they're doing a lot more than that. They're helping a lot of veterans. And sure, right. there's, I mean, there's personality conflicts. I may not like you or you may not like me. Uh, there's some people that for some reason don't like George or maybe don't like Joe. 
It's irrelevant. If you don't the like George, is, go talk to Joe. Go talk to Joe. If you don't like Joe, go talk to George. Yeah. yeah. But but the point is, we've got two dedicated veteran service officers who their only focus is to help veterans. Right. And we need to do everything we can as individuals, as a city, and as a county to support them so that the veterans, because there's, there's no way that any person off the street is going to go directly to the VA and get the assistance that they need. It's frustrating for George and Joe. They had difficulty getting uh, the information they need and getting cutting through the red tape. And uh, Rich Morzinski out at the fair the other day was telling me about a situation where the Veterans Administration, in their wisdom, made some changes that uh, adverse, adversely affect some veterans. And the average veteran wouldn't even know about that. And that's why you have to have somebody who's trained and experienced if you're going to wind yourself through that maze. Well, these three gentlemen are trained, are experienced. No question. And they still have trouble navigating oh, yeah. the maze. But so they're still helping a lot of people. The average you know, veteran on the street, he doesn't know which way to go. I don't care so how... So that's where to go is yeah. towards George or George. I don't care if Joe or George sees three veterans a week or 300 veterans a week. To me, that's immaterial. It's how many are being helped right. and how many veterans are getting the benefits they've earned and are deserving. That's right. To me, that's the question. And so anything we can do to support them, I think we need to bend over backwards to do. Well, again, I think we're on the, I think we're on the, the, the same page in that I need to poll all the individual members and then get back to everyone and say, well, we'll Thursday at 7 o'clock or what Tuesday at 3 o'clock or whatever find a time that seems to work out for everybody and it won't 100% of the time so that we can have a quorum the, at these meetings and at least start moving forward and trying to accomplish some things there you go and like I told you before the meeting just let me know where and when yeah and I will be there and I and I know you know I, I've known Steve long enough I don't know Natalie that long uh, but I, I in, in Maceo I've talked to him enough and in Candace I've known for a long time they're committed they want to help too right it's just a matter of getting everybody together and getting everybody on the same page so uh, that is is board president that's my responsibility and that's what I'm going to do we're going to get everybody uh, together and then figure out how to approach this thing go all right well, we can't take any action today because we don't have a quorum, but uh, I think we still are making some progress. So uh, right now, we will figure again to meet the second Friday in August at 2 p.m. I don't remember what that date is, but uh, that's where we have been. And if there's a time that's better for everybody, maybe we'll have it resolved by then. And instead of that, maybe we'll meet in September. Or maybe we'll meet at the end of August or whatever. But we'll work it out so that it seems to make sense for everybody and then we'll see if we can get things back on track sounds good boss all right we are adjourned thank you